sure. Welcome to the nature nest. Come on in. Uh, my name is Caitlin the Condor. Uh, condor is a type of bird, again, so look it up. Uh, and welcome to your nature orientation. So today we will be going on like a traditional nature orientation that you would go to if you were physically at Wilderness Canoe Base. So you will be able to see some of our coolest nature things on our walk today, on our little nature hike. So before we go outside, I want to show off something very cool. So, one very popular animal in the Northwoods is moose. So moose are massive. They're so big. Um, so just a few things to help you comprehend their size. This is the skull of a moose. Uh, so it's just the top half. Um, and then we also have uh, the jaw. So the jaw isn't even a part of this. So this is just the top half of a moose super big animal. Uh, moose love actually to hang out in swampy areas. So if you're looking for a moose, go to a swampy area because they eat swampy like vegetative growth that grow in swamps. Um, so that's a really great place to start if you're looking for a moose. Next up, we have the antlers, right? So antlers grow on male moose. Uh, they grow on their heads just like this one. And then the other, uh, if you see the skull here, you can see kind of a little bit what that would look like um, coming out of a moose. So they will shed these as well. Males will shed these. That's how we found them. Uh, they are pretty heavy though. So moose have really strong necks, right? They have really strong necks. Um, but the male moose will use their antlers and fight with one another a little bit. Um, so you can sometimes, like if you listen really hard when you're in the woods, you can hear He's clacking against each other, so that would be two moose fighting. Um, but yeah, they grow on their heads. They'll shed. They don't shed at the same time, coincidentally. Uh, so you could possibly, it would be kind of goofy, um, see one moose walking around just with one antler. That has never happened to me, but I really hope I see that at some point in my life. Um, but with that, that's a little bit about the moose. But we will be going outside now and looking at some really cool plants up here in the Boundary Waters next. Oh, what do we have here? So these appear to be wild roses, um, like the very beautiful roses that you may have in your gardens. Pick them for a parent, pick them for a, a crush, I don't know. Um, so wild roses, they look a little different than your normal, you know, traditional rose. Um, they grow in a bush like this, they are still pointy with a lot of different spikes so be careful um, but eventually these will close up into what are called rose hips um, let's see if I can find the start of one here maybe this is the start of one kind of um, this is the start of one about to bloom but this will eventually turn into a rose hip you can see the back of it how it's starting to bubble up a little bit that will turn into a rose hip um, rose hips are very, very high in vitamin C, um, so people can make tea with rose hips. Um, so if you ever are feeling a little down, if you have a convenient wild rose bush by you, you can make some tea um, and perk yourself right up. Oh, found a little gem. These are very interesting. So these are called horsetail ferns. Let's see a little buggy on them. Um, so this is a type of fern. They maybe look a little different than um, the ferns that immediately pop into your head. Um, but horsetail ferns are pretty cool. Uh, the voyagers who used to paddle around this area um, and trade with the Ojibwe people, um, they would use these horsetail ferns sometimes to brush their teeth as well the story say. So imagine brushing your teeth with these every day. Makes sense why they had kind of nasty looking teeth. I don't know. <laughs> Take care of your hygiene kids. Very important. So right here 
we have our almighty birch tree. Um, so birch is very recognizable, right? Uh, they're all over the place. Uh, birch, you can identify it by this peely, papery bark that you see. Um, there are so many different uses for birch bark. I have some here. Uh, make sure that you're never ripping birch bark off the tree. That's like peeling off a protective layer. Um, so our skin is our protective layer. Um, so it's kind of like if you have damaged skin, so it doesn't feel good for the tree. Um, birch bark has many, many, many uses. On trail a lot, we use it for fire starting. Um, so it has a lot of different cool um, like oils in it that help start fires. But more to come on that later. So this is an aspen tree. You know it's an aspen because of the way it is. Kidding. There's a few different ways to know it's an aspen. So first, the leaves are like perfectly circular. Um, they're really round and they kind of quake in the wind. So you can see them kind of rustling in the wind and they make a really, really beautiful sound. Um, aspen trees and birch trees oftentimes get confused because they both kind of have this paler bark on them. Um, so a few ways you can tell an aspen is an aspen. Um, is first you can touch the bark and kind of rub it. It has this dust on it um, that actually has SPF qualities. So if you're missing out on some sunscreen, it's like SPF 5. So could save you on a pinch. Um, also, I've heard it's been used for aspirin in the past. So if you have a little headache, um, you can just lick an aspen tree. But also, if you want to know if an aspen is actually an aspen and it's a baby, um, the baby aspens have a little bit of a green tint to them. So again, you lick it, and if it turns green, it's an aspen. Saw it here first, folks. So it has a little bit of a green tint to it. <laughs> this is hawkweed. It's everywhere. These are oxide daisies. They're also everywhere. They're invasive, so you can pick them, even though they're beautiful. <laughs> so this right here is a super duper important plant for going on canoe trips. Uh, this is called large leaf aster, or also known as lumberjack toilet paper. So it looks kind of like what you use it for, okay? So sometimes you might run out of toilet paper on trail, and you might need to improvise a little bit, this is a great option. So it's actually very fuzzy on the back uh, and the front, and it kind of smells like lemons. So, you know, depending on how you think of it, it could maybe be a step up from your traditional toilet paper. I don't know. This little tree is called a pine. So there's a few different types of pines. Um, the one, two very important ones are red and white pines. So red pines, you can tell, is red pine. A um, few different ways. First, if you look at the bark, it's scaly uh, and it has a little bit of a red tint to it. Also, if you pluck off some of the pine needles, I hope I got more, um, they come in bunches. So red pines come in bundles of two. Uh, so you can think of red has three letters, you can think of R and then D, so the end caps of the word red. Do you remember that? So this is another type of pine. This is a white pine. So white pines um, have like a paler bark. It's not scaly like red pines, so it's a pale bark. Uh, and then if you pluck off some of the needles from a white pine, can get some, come on. Pluck off some needles. They have bunches of five in them. So you can think like the word white has five letters in it. Uh, so it has five needles in a bunch. White pines grow up to be super big. Um, they can be some of the biggest trees in the state. Uh, also, they're pretty soft too. So they're a little more soft than red pines. So that's another way to tell the difference. This is a cedar tree. And cedar trees are pretty easy to identify because their needles are more like scales. 
So you can see that they kind of have overlaying scaly type um, needles uh, and they come in these little sprigs so you can like pluck off a sprig. Uh, and cedar is like an iconic wilderness tree because we will at campsites um, we'll clean it up all nice and then leave a cedar sprig with a rock on the fire grate. So it's always nice to end up at a campsite where you know that a wilderness person was there last. Also, cedar, um, you can make tea out of it and it gives you kind of funny dreams, which is another classic thing that we'll sometimes do on trail is drink cedar tea. Um, but these are all over the place. They typically like swampy areas um, and they can grow just about anywhere. Sometimes you'll see them growing off of like cliffs, um, kind of winding up in different ways. Um, so they're a pretty cool, resilient tree. So, I hope you learned a bunch today about some nature stuff. Um, and some cool things that you can maybe learn about or see. Um, but I hope this challenges you to go outside and learn some stuff for yourself. Uh, because what a great way to connect with Wilderness Canoe Base than to go outside in your own area and explore around. So, I'll see you next time with Caitlin the Condor in the Nature Corner.